Mel, Absolutely. apparently you have some wonderful wisdom to share about how to reach your audience on well, social media. Well, let's hope I do. Uh, I, you can be the judge of that. Yeah, you can be the judge of that, exactly. I thought I'd just uh, bring some insights on how you can stand out with video among, up on social media, right? Because um, I'm guessing a lot of um, government um, organizations right now are using social media. Um, to get their video out there um, or their message out there on social media, but it's, you know, there's so much content on social media today. So how do you make sure that people actually get to see your video and actually watch it until the end? Because you have a message most of the times when it's a public service announcement, you have a message that needs to be seen by your audience in order for it to be effective. So how do you do that? Well, and I thought I'd just bring uh, a touch today on uh, what I call the watch journey, which is a little bit um, about of a, col a consolidation process that your audience goes through when a video gets served to them. So what I, I wanted to give some tips and tricks on, um, you know, if you can understand the journey your viewer is going through, you can actually optimize that watch journey. And it consists out of a couple of phases. Um, but uh, I want to use an analogy to kind of explain analogies. and give some tips for each stage. Um, and the analogy is a video, um, the way we consume video is kind of like going to, get it, wait for it, going to a bookstore. It's a little bit of the, you know, contrast video book, but bear with me, I'll explain it. So let's say um, when you go to a bookstore mm -hmm. and you're looking for a book, mm -hmm. let's imagine we're going to a bookstore, close your eyes, you're in a bookstore, you're looking for a book. How, you, how would you go about it, Luke? Doors are open. I'd look around <laughs> and I'd begin to wander aimlessly through the bookstore. Okay, yeah. So you, you're looking for certain books on the shelves? I would have no idea what I'm looking for. Okay. I'm looking, I'm, I'm just glancing around, seeing if anything catches my interest, might be on display, might have those little uh, genre yep. headings above yep. it, but clueless. Okay. Well, it's kind of a little bit similar in how videos get served to your audience, right? They either appear by uh, what's appeared to them in the feed, so that's kind of like the equivalent of books on the shelves or you kind of know uh, as an audience what you're looking for. You might uh, zump, jump to the computer to search for things. That can be a genre, that can be an author, that can be a title, it doesn't really matter. But the, the, the mechanism of that kind of works the same when people uh, search for your videos. So content, either search by, um, uh, on your feed or by searching. Now, you need to make sure that people can actually find it. So make sure you use very uh, SEO sensitive um, keywords to help the algorithm understand um, what sort of uh, content your video is about, so it can serve it to the right people, and it can you know, it can surface in the ser those search results when people search for it. Um, and the biggest tip that I want to give today is, and if you haven't done this before, I really, really recommend this: is use SRT files. Do you know what SRT files are? I do. You want to explain you? it? <laughs> I'll explain it for you. Um, so an SRT file essentially is instead of um, having captions that are burnt in, or essentially text that's going to come up over here, mm -hmm. uh, repeating what you're saying. You have a text document with time codes that you're going to upload to the same player as your video. So for example, YouTube, you upload your video, it'll usually say, do you have subtitles, do you have captions, something like that. You click that button, you upload that file, and that means you can toggle captions on and off, a little CC button. Or if you're scrolling through Facebook and you don't have sound, you see tech, uh, subtitles pop up automatically, SRT files usually, and that is very handy, not just for people to be able to read or digest your information about audio, it means your video is searchable. Not just your heading, not just your little caption, but the actual content inside your video. Absolutely, and that will help your video being discovered by your audience. So that's step number one, right? If it doesn't appear for them, no one can consume it. So make sure you spend some time there. Then the next three phases are really about um, making sure that people understand what they're in for. Right, like I said, it's a bit of a validation process. The irony is that you know, we probably all, or I do at least, can go down the rabbit hole of social media and spend hours on there. But when it comes to certain content, we unconsciously kind of try to get a gist of, you know, should I spend watching, you know, should I spend my time watching this particular video? So it's about, you know, getting people to stop their thumb on that particular video that is yours. So. In the bookstore analogy, if we go back, so let's say you've got your book, mm -hmm. right? What is the first thing you do? I will judge it by its cover. Exactly. <laughs> well, you know, the saying says, don't never judge a book by its cover. The irony is that we actually do that. And we do that with video as well. Just like we look at the front of the book, we look at the back of the book, and we might even look at the first couple of pages to get an idea of 
what is the writing style, how many, you know, are there many pictures uh, in some cases, uh, are there big letters. Um, we do the same when it comes to video. We look at the thumbnail, we look at the first couple of images, we look at the copy that's sitting around and um, underneath the video or even in the video. And the reason why we do that, and again, this is unconsciously, this happens in like a split second. We're trying to get an idea of, you know, is this really something for me? Is this something I should care about? And this is the best of its kind. You know, it's about um, that usability, desirability, and the last one is uh, usability. No, usefulness, yeah. thank you. <laughs> so close. Um, but really it comes down to, you know, should I spend my time? Is this something I'm interested in? Should I spend my time watching this video? So try to spend some time thinking about a good thumbnail, a good first couple of images, and in particularly, what I, uh, tip that I want to give you guys today is the 3, 10, 30 structure. If you're a client of mine, or if you've watched any of the other episodes, you've probably heard me saying this a million times, but the 3, 10, 30 structure is key for public service announcements. The 3, 10, 30 structure is really to grab and to keep people's attention. Um, this research has proven that um, if you can get people to watch the first 30 seconds of your video, they're actually more likely to watch the rest of your video. And you know, if you, like I said, in a PSA video, you need to get a message across, so you need to make sure that you get them as far as possible in that video. Now, how do you do that? First three seconds, grab attention. So anything that is visually interesting, uh, that can be a bold statement, even a question on screen. And in the first 10 seconds, you wanna set the scene. So let them know, again, help them go through that validation process. Let them know what they're in for. And it could be as simple as, uh, kind of like we do, um, hi, I'm Mel from Shootstar, and today I'd like to talk to you about how you can make a good PSA video. Cool, you know, who I am, where I'm from, and what you're in for, right? And then within the first 30 seconds of your video, communicate your key message, that one sentence that you want people to remember. That's it. That's what needs to happen in those first 30 seconds. So grab attention, let them know what they're in for, key message. 30 seconds. Nice. You know, the, do you know the benefit of that, of keeping it so to the point? There are so many benefits to that. There are a few <laughs> benefits, yes. I absolutely. think one big one is that if people tune out or if people leave, scroll past anything, they get the general gist of your entire video within that, yep. the message is there. And also they know within 30 seconds whether they this is relevant to them and whether they should mm -hmm. continue. Absolutely. Yep, spot on. Well done, Luke. <laughs> Thank you. And then the last phase, so let's say, uh, you know, people have got your book, um, you have looked at you know, the front, the back, scroll through the pages. People now read the book. At the very end, the, the main thing that you want to do with a book is for people to remember the morale of the story, right? Same thing with a video. You want to make sure that um, your call to action is really clear. Um, so make sure to stick to the one call to action. Don't kafafalon on with a lot of others and, and um, like, follow, whatever. Um, keep it to the one very to the point uh, call to action and keep it um, what I call active. Use active verbs. Um, very direct messages, so for instance, register here, um, download X, um, visit this website, etc. So keep it very, very to the point and ideally in text on screen. Exciting times. Hey, hey, that was, <laughs> that was a lot. I hope, you know, there was something useful in there, but that is really the mm -hmm. watch journey. So if you can understand that, uh, uh, you can actually optimize that whole journey and making sure that people can actually get to the end of your video message. So. Go and give that a try. Think about the bookstore um, and um, that should help you get your message uh, across.